Good day, everybody, and welcome back to the Flight Deck. In this next series of videos, we're going to be taking a look at how to fly the ATR-72. It's a new aircraft to the channel. We're going to be using it in a series coming up very shortly. So I wanted to give you a look at the aircraft if you want to look at getting it and uh, how to fly it, or at least how I fly it. I'm still learning, so I might not be doing everything exactly 100% but it'll give us an opportunity to take a look at it and figure it out. So the ATR is a European turboprop, comes in two variants. There's the 42, which is a 42 seat version, and the 72, which we see here, the 72 seat version. It is a twin engine turboprop flying, usually cruising around the 20 to 21,000 foot range. But as you can see, with the position of the gear and the low slung belly and the high wing, uh, she is prone for tail strikes, and that is something you have to watch on takeoff. We'll discuss that a little bit further on as we get into it. But we're going to be flying up to Auckland, so let's get on board, and we'll start getting the aircraft up and ready to go. We'll show you around the cockpit and uh, show you what some of the uh, controls do for the outside of the aircraft. All right, we're on board the aircraft now. As you can see, she is cold and dark. And over on the right, we do have a temp, uh, tablet, EFB, that allows us to do various things. And I'm gonna open up all the doors. We'll take a quick look outside again, and you'll be able to see uh, everything that works here. So on the right side, you can see we have the service door and underneath that is the post to prevent tail strikes when the aircraft is loading in case she rocks back on the main wheels and on the other side of the aircraft as we come around there's the main passenger and crew entry door and then up front we have the cargo compartment where everything will go in now if you run gsx you can get the profile for this and everything will load properly the passengers will enter the back the bags will go on the front and uh, even a little service van will pull up at the back to load in the meals and the drinks for the flight. But that is everything on the outside of the aircraft. All right, we're back on board the airplane now and we can start getting everything set up. I'm gonna run through everything, try to explain it the best I can and uh, we'll go through all that. We'll be breaking the uh, flight down into a series of videos so that it will help with uh, explaining things and make it a little bit easier to find things that you want to find. So the pre-flight's done. We've done our walk around, checked the aircraft for damage and leaks and everything. So we can come in, we've checked to make sure the emergency equipment is on board, all the manuals, and we've reviewed the maintenance manual. So that is all done. That is our cockpit preparations. So we're gonna check a few things before we power the aircraft up. We're gonna make our, sure our flaps are up our gust lock is on and our gear lever is in the down position. Down here we have the parking brake. It is in a uh, three position. Fully forward is brake off. Then there's an emergency brake in the middle and then the regular parking brake is fully pulled back. We can now come over to our panel. Main things we want to make sure is that the Doors open the main door with the tail prop in place, wheel chocks are in place, and of course we have ground power. Now using the tablet here will not show a ground power unit outside, but it will give you ground power for the aircraft for when you start to power it up. And we're going to start doing that right now. So we'll go to the overhead panel. As you can see here, it's uh, fairly straightforward. We have circuit breakers up above the main panel. But we're going to come down here. I zoomed out slightly so that you can see it all. As you can see with the external power selected, it's showing that we have the generators. And uh, we'll go through the, uh, the different sections here starting at the top left. So here's our right engine. This is our fire pull handle on all our testing equipment. We have our flight control computers here and our main flight computers. Landing gear, secondary landing gear indicator is up on the overhead as well. Down here we have our door indicator for our various cargo doors, service doors, etc. And that shows here. Next down we have our fuel pumps and cross feeds, all located here. Down here we have our call for the call for the outside and call for the cabin. Then we have our 
lights here. We've got mini cab lights. We've got our, our uh, flight compartment lights, standby compass and dome, and things like that. And down at the bottom, we have the captain's wiper off slow and fast. Moving up top here in the left center, we have our cockpit voice recorder. Next one down is our DC power and our AC buses. We have our main battery switch here. Battery select, our main and emergency. You can see our DC generators are down here. Service buses, all that good stuff. And it also shows whether the external power is connected and on. Down from there, we have the engine start. We have engine start for the engine number one, engine number two. And various uh, positions here. Turning it straight up is off, and you can also abort the start. We have crank, which will just crank the engine without starting it. We have start A, start B, and start A and B. Those are the two different igniters. And we always use start A and B, just out of habit. Next down is the pop prop brake. We'll get into that when we start up uh, the engines. Uh, basically, it uh, prevents uh, the right-hand engine propeller from spinning. Under that, we have all our nav lights and beacon lights and all that. Moving up to the center right, we have our audio test equipment here. Under that's our hydraulics, our red, or sorry, our blue and green hydraulic system. Under that is our AC power with our AC buses and AC generators. It says AC wild because it's not restricted to a certain frequency, it's whatever it's putting out. So it is a fluctuating frequency set of generators, from what I understand. Next down we have our pro peats, captain standby and first officer, and then we have our windshield heating beside that. Underneath there we have our anti-ice, we have our props, we have our mode select, if we have icing conditions at less than 10, negative 10 degrees, and we have our rudder elevator anti-ice as well. We have our side window anti-ice, and then moving down we have our engine anti-ice and uh, various things for temperatures and modes select. So like most of that's not automatic, we just do the props and that stuff. Haven't had to use it yet. Underneath that we have our signs, our no devices, our seat belts, and our emergency exit. Moving up to the right now we have our engine 2 fire test and testing and our fire pull lever. Under that we have our compartment uh, smoke detector and the lavatory smoke detector. Below that's our oxygen, passenger and crew. Under there we have our avionics fan exhaust fans uh, to exhaust out anything if we had smoke in the airplane or whatever. Below that we have our basically our packs, we have our compartment temperatures, air circulations, temperature controls, air bleeds and all that good stuff. Then we have our enunciator test light and our co-pilot, our first officer's side um, wipers. So that is the overhead panel. Moving down we have our displays. We have our uh, main uh, primary flight displays, our NDs, and then our ECAS, ECAM displays here. Autopilot's located up top. Coming down we have our FMCs, weather radar, and then down here we have, as mentioned, our parking brake, our throttles, our condition levers, our, uh, sorry, condition levers there, power levers here, gust lock, then we move down here, various switches and radio information, light switches down here, our flight recorder, and then our testing stuff and a few other things down at the bottom. That's basically the aircraft. So. Let's get her powered up. So we're going to come up top. First thing we're going to do is up here. We do not have to lift the card since we're not uh, the card, the guard, since we're not going into overload. You do that just by clicking on it. But we're going to come down here to the battery switch and turn the batteries on. You can hear the aircraft now starting to power up. So we are on aircraft battery, but we don't want to be staying on the aircraft battery at the moment. So we're going to come down here to our DC power, external power, turn that on. And we'll come over to our AC external power, turn that on. So now the aircraft is being fed power. We're going to get a lot of faults since pumps and stuff are not running off the engines at this point in time. 
So internal, external power is set and on. We're now going to do our warning systems. Word of caution, do not pull these. If you do, you'll have to reset the aircraft in the sim. So we're going to come over here. We'll do our squib test. You can see the squibs for the agents. That's the agent that's used to extinguish the fires will light up. We're then going to do our fault test, which is downwards. Fault's on. And then we're going to do our fire test, which is the up arrow. There we go. And again, we don't want to pull that. So we'll do our squib test, our fault test, and then our up arrow on the fire. There we go. So that is all done. We're now going to come down to the main panel here. We'll hit the caution. Dust lock here is engaged, so I'm moving my yoke joystick. Nothing is moving on the flight controls, which is what we want. We're going to clear all the cautions that were turned up when we powered the aircraft on. What we're going to do now is turn on the pop prop brake. So let's pop outside for a second. All right, so as you can see, there's no exhaust at the back of the aircraft, so there is no APU for the airplane. What we do instead is we run the number two engine but with the prop locked in place. So running the number two engine will give us power and uh, bleed air but the prop won't be spinning so it's not a major safety concern about having the aircraft sitting here with that prop going and that's what the prop brake is for. So back inside we're going to come up and we are going to turn on the prop brake. So it is located here there is a guard but it's not ready. So this is a hydraulic system, but we don't have hydraulic power since the engine's not running. So if we come down here to the pedestal, we'll see hydraulic auxiliary pump. We're gonna pump that four times, four or five times. That gives us a boost in the hydraulics. We can now see it says the prop brake is ready. We'll open the guard, we'll turn it on. You see prop brake has now come on and we'll close the guard. So that is now locked in place. We can start engine number two, but the aircraft uh, propeller on that engine will not spin. So we're now going to uh, carry on going down our list. At this point passengers would be loading on and everything and uh, bags as well. So coming back up top we're going to go no devices that's our electronic devices, cell phones and all that stuff. Turn on the seatbelt sign. We're going to turn on the emergency exit lights. And we're going to turn on the windshield anti-ice. So if it was in winter conditions, it would start to uh, thaw the windows that we have outside. And that's going to do it for our cockpit preparation and preliminary setup. Next we'll be doing the FMC, so uh, I hope you'll come back for that one. If you like what I do, please consider subscribing and hitting the like button, and we will see you on the next one. Bye for now.